So let's talk about how to handle cracks. Cracks on an existing concrete. This is actually a, a, a room below this. So what do we have here? It appears we have different styles of concrete. A patch was attempted over top of this existing crack with nothing to bond the two together. The shrinkage happened and it just, you know, it just mirrored itself perfectly and it just worked its way out, obviously. And then you can see it there, or some of it. Um, so, what is this product? A product? It's, a, it's a crack isolation. Think of it like uh, your, your, fiber seam, your fiber mesh for joint compounding your walls. The walls move, but yet we don't see the cracks in there, as long as you don't have huge temperature variations. So this would go down with just, just your grout. You can just grout this down right over top of it. So now it's got a bridge. It's bridged underneath. You don't have to go on top. You don't go on top of it. You go on top of this. Put that down. Call it a day. Try, try not to uh, get anything on top of this initially. Um, and then when you come back and do your mortar bed, it now will go. It will be here, or mortar bed or leveling. You'll be on top of this. You'll go right on top of this guy directly, and you'll come right across it. Now, I've never had this fail ever. Never had it fail ever, you know, these, these bond breakers. Um, if you are concerned, I'm thinking you could probably do the first layer and then go another one, just let it float over so you're, you're going over top of it. Now, people ask, why doesn't it fail? It's only a thin layer. It's only a thin layer. Why doesn't it fail? Well, not this product, but uh, overlays in general. Well, this floor right now, as you can see, I'm pushing down on it with this blade. Well, how come that doesn't fail? That, that's, that, that's that thin coat I just showed you about. Look. How come it doesn't fail? Because that thin coat cannot deflect. It, for it to deflect, for it to fail, it has to deflect or, or chip off. That would be a different impact thing, right? But it can't, it's not deflecting because the subsurface is not deflecting. All you need to do is create a good bond between your, your leveling, your, 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 uh, your overlay, and your surface below. Now, I could track it that a little bit to get it to come up, but it's actually not a bad bond, short of the uh, gap that it wasn't, wasn't taken care of. So then again, you grout here, come back over top of it, set your, set your, your, your crack isolation materials, and you're, you're good to go. And again, if you want to overdo it, you can do this if you're worried about this still moving below. I don't, I don't think this is moving below at all. This is not moving any, any longer. Um, it just needs some crack isolation. Before that, though, it needs to be ground flat. So you can grab, you know, any, any straight edge you like to accomplish that. These materials like this, if you find them, keep them. They're perfect. They're good screed, screed rails. These are screed rails that I use the aluminum channels like this that I find different places. Sometimes I just purchase the screed rail, but um, this stuff is, you know, it's it's nice. It's got a nice length to it. And say you just wanted to do, a, you know, you needed to get a nice screed over a two-foot section, you can just cut it. Make sure you're, you're in the same cut, you know, the same depth, you know, three-quarter of an inch or one inch, whatever you're doing. Um, okay, so this is where that would help. Out. This is pretty. This is pretty. This is pretty much ready. It is pretty much flat. It's got a high spot over there. Not here. Uh, high spots behind. Uh, it might be out of your view. Right there. But on the floor level, that would tell me that's going to be my highest point. Where the floor level needs to come up to, or I need to take it down. So this is what you would evaluate with your straight edges and figure out where you need to go. I've already ground that. I'm looking at it now. I've already ground it somewhat. This is actually going to come up about a half an inch and three quarter on one side over there. Um, so again, this will get crack isolation. And then floor leveling. Use a grout, a material that doesn't need 28 days to, uh, to set up. So what do, you, what do I recommend for something like that? We're back to my rapid set. I like the rapid set. It's really a fast product. Um, I don't see it long. I don't see this expanding differently. With that said, rapid set is a different PSI than this, 
So try not to get your mortar down in here too much. You're going to clean it out. But you want still this not to be a point of concern, of issue with you. So just don't fill this with grout and say, oh yeah, cool, and then put this on here. Because that grout is now a different PSI. It's probably stronger than this existing concrete. And you might get that little bit of chipping, and you might now get your muring coming through. So you want to address this first um, with a stable product that you know not to, uh, not to also be flexible. As far as I'm concerned, um, a lot of people use epoxies. That's, that's, uh, it's, it's, that stuff sets up to 60,000 PSI. It, it's too strong for this. Um, it's, it, you don't need to go that far with it. Simply a caulk, because it's going to expand and contract between these two. It's your bond breaker again. So the caulk is not something, even though you're going to attach to it, that caulk is going to be flexible. And so now when you put down your, uh, your mortar, any issue going on there, it's going to have some give in the downward position, not in the upward where it's going to mirror through. It's going to be downward. You're going to use a, a, a caulk that will remain flexible. And that caulk that I like is like a Sikaflex type product for your sidewalks, your uh, Sikaflex. Uh, ask me which one in, a, in, a, in the comments below and I'll, I'll see if I can get you the uh, link for it. Um, it's sold at local stores. And it's the same stuff you're going to use on your sidewalk because again it, it stays flexible all year all year round so there we go here's my depth so it stays flexible all year round wow it, that's definitely air and train i can see all the air and uh, the uh air voids in it i don't know if you guys can or not hopefully that shows in the video All right, hopefully that's helpful for you also.